This is Pure Opelka with Mike Opelka. Only on the Blaze Radio Network. So uh, this is Yaron Brook. I'm filling in uh, for, for Mike uh, for Opelka over the next, uh, I guess, yesterday and today. And, and one more day to go tomorrow. And then uh, Opelka will be back on Friday. Uh, so um, he told me you guys would all treat me well. So, so far, so good. We had some weird callers yesterday, but um, everything else went went great. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if you guys watched uh, Donald Trump last night. I hope you didn't. I hope you're not watching Donald Trump every night on television. I mean, it's, it's, it's depressing. You should all get a life. I mean, um, I guess us in, uh, us in the uh, talk show business uh, and in the uh, commentary business need to watch this stuff. But really, for, for, for you guys, just just – Put on a good TV show, listen to some music, do something else. It's just too depressing uh, to to do politics and uh, and uh, Trump twenty four seven. As it is, we have too, way too much news, way too much co- commentary. Although you should always listen to me. There I was, um, you know, arguing against uh, against what I do for a living. But you know, uh, I have to admit, Trump is the gift that keeps on giving uh, for uh, talk show hosts, for commentators, for anybody in this business. I mean, it's, it doesn't stop. Every day there's something. Every day there's something to comment on. I mean, he put on quite a show last night in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, in front of you know thousands of his supporters. So he, he really knows how to play it up. A very different President Trump. Then uh, the previous night, the night we spoke to uh, to the military about Afghanistan, uh, there he was clearly reading from a teleprompter. It was all prepared statements, very calm, cool, uh, not very emotional. Yesterday he was just playing the crowd, and and you can tell he, he that's what he jo- enjoys. He he loves that, and I think I think ultimately that's why he ran for president. He he loves standing in front of a crowd and just playing it, uh, and and you know. Uh, he's good at it. He's he's an entertainer. There is no question. Not very presidential, but he is an entertainer and uh, um, did it very well, uh, very well last night. Got the got the crowd riled up, um, chanting, supportive of him. Uh, repeated all the, you know, it sounded like a campaign rally, like like many of these kind of rallies where he returns to campaign mode. But I wanted to focus on, on one part of, of, uh, of what Trump had to say last night where he really went after the media. And, and basically what he did was he, he brought with him uh, in writing everything that he had said about Charlottesville and then uh, kind of showed how the media only reported parts of it and distorted what he said and uh, – was being completely non-objective about his response to uh, Charlottesville, and he, and he, you know, he had this line again, very entertaining, very effective with that audience. That you know, the media com- co- continues to complain about how late he was, as if that was what it was important rather than what he actually said. And he's right, and he's right. The media, the media. Um, the media was unbelievably uh, distortive of what uh, Trump said. It only focused on certain things, didn't focus on other things. Um, it it uh, gave uh, Antifa and it gave, uh, you know, the, some of the violent protesters on the left a free pass. Uh, there was no real condemnation of the whole event. And, you know, we can talk about that when we talk about free speech. Uh, there was really, the media was, was terrible when it came to this. There, there, there was no... Uh, they, they completely treated this uh, in, in a one-sided, distorted, perverted kind of way. And um, so Trump was, was right. I mean, there he was uh, uh, talking about that. And uh, to some extent, you know, everything he said was reflective of the media. And we'll talk more about the media because, I, because they think Trump is onto something, right? He really is onto something. The media, the leftist bias in the media is offensive, and it's there, and it, it is no question it's there. You, you just have to look at a New York Times or Washington Post or, or in any newspaper, even the Wall Street Journal, any given day, and the slant of the news is so outrageous 
that it, you know, it's it, for somebody like me who consumes huge amount quantity of news and, and has to talk about the news and has to talk about, you know, what's going on in the world. It's really, really difficult to figure out well, what is right and what is not, what is true and what is bogus. Uh, you know, they misquote people. So you have to actually go find the quote. You have to watch the video to even know what people say. You can't even trust the media to do that. And this is on all sides. The so-called mainstream media, which who are supposed to be professional and who are generally more professional than what I would call the fringe media, um, you know, are so unprofessional. It's under, it, it, you know, an example that just came up because I did a show a couple of weeks ago uh, on uh, the Google memo. I, I don't know if you remember this, but this guy wrote this memo uh, at Google about diversity and about why there weren't as many women in at Google. And he wrote a 10-page memo about this. And I disagree with much of what was in the memo. I thought it was badly constructed and badly written. And some of the, his claims are just, are just, I think, pseudoscience and false. But... It, it was a very reasonably written memo. It was the, it was a very reasonable tone. He didn't come out. He didn't. He, he wasn't outrageous. He didn't come out against women. He 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 emphasized that you should judge people as individuals, not as groups. And he and he, you know he, he came out for diversity explicitly. He just thought that the way GoGo was going about it was all wrong, and there were ways in which to do it right. Again, a lot of that I disagree with, but. It was a 10-page memo that was somewhat silly, but not crazy, not nutty, not offensive. And yet the headlines in the newspapers were unbelievable. Here's just one, but there were, there were worst ones. This is one that I picked up this morning. But Google employees' anti-diversity ma- manifesto on women's neuroticism goes viral. Yes, he did mention women being more neurotic than men. And again, you could argue with that fact or not. He didn't play it up particularly. The manifesto was not on women's neuroticism, and it wasn't an anti-diversity memo. But that's the headline, and, and that's one of the better headlines. And it's not just the headline. If you actually read the story, the story is filled with just blatant misrepresentations. Now, I actually read all 10 pages of the memo. But when I read these articles and I looked at the headline, it became obvious to me that either these journalists didn't read the memo, which I think is the most likely. I think they just scanned it and, and just read other people, other journalists' comments on the memo. Or they're just lying, which I think in some cases is probably true. But, but I, 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 I still far more lean towards the they are just incompetent. So... You know, Donald Trump is on to something. Uh, you know, I, I listen to a lot of you who listen to me frequently know. I listen to NPR a lot. And uh, I like NPR. It, it, I find it interesting. And uh, I find it particularly intellectual. I find that they cover stories nobody else covers. But man, are they biased. It's unbelievable to me how biased they are. You know, now I'm an economist or a finance guy, really. So I know something about finance and I know something about economics. And, 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 it, and so it jumps out of me in those areas because I actually know those fields pretty well. And their coverage of those areas is so bogus. It's so nonsensical. And, you know, they have a panel on economics. And they have a radical Keynesian and a moderate Keynesian. And they present it as if that is the entire spectrum of possibilities when it comes to economic analysis. You can either be a somewhat Keynesian or a dedicated Keynesian and put aside what Keynesian is. I mean, pro-government intervention, pro the idea of government stimulus, that government really creates jobs, stuff like that, right? That's the spectrum. When there are many outside of that spectrum, both way to the left and I won't say way to the right, way to the free market side and way to the more status side. But it's not just that they say, okay, we're Keynesian and we're just going to present Keynesian views. They actually think they're giving you a diversity because these people might disagree about whether the stimulus package should be $250 billion or $1 trillion. And nobody on there is representing the idea that there shouldn't be a, tr- a, a, 
a, a stimulus package at all. And nobody on there is representing kind of the socialist viewers. We shouldn't stimulate. We should just nationalize. But they present it as if we're being fair. This is the spectrum. This is everything that you have. So when I listen to NPR, I have to constantly filter, okay? This is bias. This is bias. So when I hear stuff on a topic I don't know, so that I don't know the specific ways in which they are biasing the coverage, I have to constantly work at reminding myself not to really believe anything they say, to, to, to create mental markers for what they say that might be interesting, and then when I get home to check it out and to do some more research. And even that research is hard because all the other news sources are biased as well. All right. So, so uh, you know, Trump is, is right. Now, the joke about Trump is that while he slams the, the leftist media, and I think justifiably, he then goes ahead and praises Fox. Now, when I come back, we're going to talk about Fox's bias. And we're also going to talk about all the things that Trump distorted and misrepresented yesterday. Talk about false news, how he was reading from his quotes selectively, and how he was misrepresenting himself. Pretty stunning. Creating false news about himself. All in the name of the truth. All right, you're listening to Yaron to Yaron Brook filling in for Mike Apelka, and uh, we are on the Blaze Radio Network. We'll be back, and we'll talk to Julie when we get back right after this. You're listening to Pure Opelka with Mike Opelka on the Blaze Radio Network. All right, this is Yaron Brook filling in for Apelka, and. Uh, we're talking about the media, biased media, untrue media, false news. And I want to, I wanna, during uh, the show today, get to the root of this. Where, where does this come from? Where, where did all this false news come from? Now, we've evaluated some of this on, on, uh, on the left media. And what I want to get to in a little bit is evaluating Trump, what actually Trump said yesterday. And then his uh, endorsement as president of the United States of Fox News. And, and why I think that's such a bad idea, for many reasons. All right, but before that, uh, we have Julie on the line who wants to catch up on uh, something I said yesterday. Hi, Julie. Hi, you're on. It's, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. Oh, thank I'm you. I'm going to try to pretend that. it's just you and me and not all the other listeners, okay? So I won't be nervous. Okay. <laughs> okay. Nobody else hey, listens um, to my show anyway. It's just I, you well, and me. We'll, we'll, we'll pretend that's yeah. happening, okay? It's just you and I. All right, um... Yesterday, I listened. To, I listened to you on Sunday. My husband and I listened to you. And yesterday, when you were on, your bio, your bio touched me, and it, it really brought home a lot of things because I hadn't heard that before. And to hear you talk was really, really meant a lot. And then you had a couple knuckleheads call in, <laughs> and they were so disrespectful to you. And it was towards the end of the show, and I couldn't get through. And it it brought it, it tears of I probably I was upset, you know I was angry yeah. and hurt because of what they said and I'm not going to repeat what they said it would just give them credence but um, uh, the disrespect you handled it so well I want you to know that oh thank you but thank you <laughs> it just seems that no matter how m many of us understand history because I I was as a child was compelled to understand history. And I was able to, being in the Army, I made it my business when I was in Germany to go to uh, Dachau and to Amsterdam, to Anne Frank and Secret Frank's Annex. Yeah. Yeah. And, and those, those in, in the sub-camps, and, and to see all this stuff, it gives me the chills. These are m memorials to the dead, and to look through the window that Anne looked through. And I'm shaking because this this changed my life. Yeah, no, it's it's a, it's a, it's it, an incredibly uh, emotional experience. Yes, yes, and, and no one who who's ever done that can say this. This is a very where it just seems like no matter what people learn, 
it's like we're all condemned to repeat history, and those of us who understand history are being drugged along. Well, I, I think you're absolutely right, and it relates to a big part of, of, of the topic I'm going to talk about today because I think that people don't learn history, don't study history. I also think that today um, people accept the fact because they don't accept facts, and we'll talk about that. They don't accept that there is one true reality. They don't accept the idea of truth, that they're willing, uh, they're much more open today in our culture to accept conspiracy theories, to accept um, uh, revisionist histories, uh, to just be completely detached from uh, what is happening in the rest of the world because none of it is real to people in some deep sense. They don't think history is real. They don't think, they don't think you know, th th there is a truth out there to be learned from and, and to be studied. Uh, and and they, can, they can go on and they can talk about, I don't know, Hitler, and it's, it's, it's completely detached from them. It's like it's a completely floating abstraction. They have no conception of what that means, and you can't convince them because they live in their own reality. And that has become, I think that's so prevalent across the entire political spectrum. People who are not, attached to reality, people who are not attached to truth. And, um, it, you know, it, it, it's those callers yesterday, but it's, Two it's minutes. I, I see it everywhere. I see it across the entire spectrum. Yeah, and, and I have to tell you, my husband is an immigrant from Canada, and he immigrated here when he was nine years old. And his story is a little different except for the fact he was, he fought, during Desert Storm, yep. as, a, as a Canadian citizen, because his father was worked for a company, an American company, out of Massachusetts, and he couldn't make it to his immigration appointments because he's always getting deployed. <laughs> wow. When he got finally to his, when he got back from Desert Storm in ninety, you know the the first Gulf War, he made it to the Nash. He was in the hundred first. When he made it to um, his citizenship appointment and took the oath, they had a special guest. It was Senator Al Gore. Oh, God. We'll yeah. talk about Gore later today. Yeah, you, you, well, you have to... When he, my husband was in his... We have less form. than a minute, Julie, because okay. we had a hard stop. Okay. Senator Gore refused to shake my husband's hand. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah, I mean, no, no, he's a disgusting human being and why anybody right. takes him seriously and why... Why anybody um, yeah, listens to him or goes to watch his movies, uh, unless you're like Alex and you have to because it's your job, I don't understand. But, but yeah, I mean, it's, these are horrible people. Go ahead. Yes, thank you so much, Ron. Oh, thank you, Julie. All right. So, uh, uh, you know, yes, yesterday we had some nasty callers. Trolls uh, is the modern term for them. But, uh, you know, we are not going to be silenced. We are going to go out there and seek the truth Ten. because there is such a thing as truth there are such things as facts there is Five, an objective reality four, all right you're listening to your own book on the michael two, pelka show we'll be one. right back this is pure pelka with michael pelka on the blaze radio network all right we're talking today about fake news media bias Donald Trump's defending himself yesterday at the demonstration in Arizona and, and endorsing, endorsing the president of the United States, endorsing one particular media outlet, Fox News. I think that generally is, uh, is scary, but there we are. Uh, president Trump, the president of the, did it. You know, he, he, he endorsed one channel. All right, if you want in on this conversation, if you have a, uh, an opinion about the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, the, the Fox News, uh, CNN. Um, call in 888-900-3393, 888-900-3393. If you want to talk about media, truth, speech, any of those topics, uh, you know, uh, call in. Or if you want to talk about something else, call in. Just don't call in just for the sake of harassing me. All right. Um, so the media, most of the media, most of what is considered the mainstream media is no question 
solidly on kind of the left side of the political non-spectrum, right? Because it is uh, it is uh, for a bigger state. It is uh, generally uh, buying into much of kind of the leftist agenda as as reflected in the in uh, at our universities. Uh, they, they love government action. Uh, they hate capitalism. They um, and and they clearly hate Donald Trump and. Uh, he, he, you know, granted, it's easy to hate Donald Trump, but but they, they they distort everything in terms of how they present it, and and really, I can't defend. I mean, I wish I could defend the New York Times or the Washington Post or any of these guys. Now, I think they are still marginally better than the non-mainstream media. Now, that's really a scary thought. I think that the mainstream media is still marginally better. Than the non-mainstream media. On, on, in, in, if you look at the headlines in Salon.com, they're far worse in terms of their bias, in terms of their absurdity, in terms of their lack of any kind of affiliation with truth than the New York Times. So, you know, at the margin, they're slightly better. So I'm much more likely to read the New York Times, the Washington Post. I can still get something out of reading the New York Times, Washington Post, whereas most of the media um, on the Internet is, is completely, you know, absurd and, and, and nutty and crazy and meaningless. Now, you know, that's kind of the media on, on the left, if you will, kind of the conventional Democratic aligned, Democratic Party aligned part of the media. What, what about the right? Well, Fox is ridiculous. Fox is so pro-Trump, it's, it's not even funny anymore, right? They have been since before the election. There's no objectivity at Fox anymore. There's no seeking the truth at Fox anymore. There is the party line. It's almost become like the party platform, Russia Today. That's, you know, the, 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 the uh, outlet for Putin's propaganda. Well, that's Fox now. I mean, which is disturbing, particularly given that basically Trump said that last night. Fox are good guys. Why are Fox good guys? Because they support me. Because they, you know, when I say stuff, they, they don't criticize. They don't question. They are selective in what they report about what I say. He didn't say this, of course. <clears throat> in a light that shows me as part of, positive. Now, I don't think Fox has ever been particularly objective, but it's gotten worse. And this election, this election, if nothing else, this election brought out the worst in the media. The worst, the very worst. Across the spectrum, there was a disregard for truth, for objectivity, for facts, for reality. And... Uh, on Fox's side, an adoration, just an adoration for Donald Trump, whether it was O'Reilly or whether it's, I mean, Hannity is basically Trump's right-hand man. There is no separation anymore. Now, there have probably been people like that in the media always. And by the way, the same is true of how the left media treated Obama. Obama could do no wrong as far as the mainstream media. I mean, there was some real bad stuff, objectively bad stuff. Put aside partisanship. Put aside your particular philosophical point of view on things. Really objectively bad stuff that happened under Obama. His foreign policy was a disaster. You remember his resetting relations with Russia? Well, Russian relationship got worse. Did the media ever report that? No. Do uh, you remember the bombing of Libya, which turned out to be a complete and utter disaster in terms of what it left over, in terms of what we got at the end. Now put aside that he said we'll lead from behind and all that. That you know, Okay, so the media, the, the media is supportive of, of America taking a diminished role. But they, they embraced this bombing of Libya, and then when it didn't turn out, did they turn against it? No. They, they, they didn't criticize him at all. New York Times, Washington Post. 
I, do you remember the? Um, do you remember the? What I consider maybe the worst thing that happened under uh, under Obama, which you know very few people even talked about, very few pe- people even discussed. Never mind, you know, criticized. You know, I think the worst thing under Obama was the IRS scandal. You know, where the IRS was not giving, uh, you know, nonprofit status to organizations that they didn't like politically. I mean, wow, that is real censorship. That is the government getting into the realm of ideas and telling people how they should think, or penalizing people because of the way they think. Media didn't think it was a big deal. It, it, I mean, nobody did, it turns out. A few hearings in Congress, and it's all disappeared. A few people in the fringe talked about it, but nobody took it seriously. So the, 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 much of the mainstream media whitewashed President Obama's uh, presidency. Uh, remember... His response to the cop killings, almost not quite as bad as Trump's response to Charlottesville, but almost as bad. Never criticized Black Lives Matter. At least in the end, Trump criticized, you know, uh, uh, the, the the KKK and the uh, and the Nazis, but Obama never criticized Black Lives Matter. Never saw the relationship, which and it clearly was, between Black Lives Matter. Uh, and, and, and what they were saying and how they were saying it and how they were acting and the, the killing of cops. Nothing from Obama. And the media stayed silent completely. No criticism of Obama. So the, the media is political. It's biased. It's unprofessional. It doesn't really read. It, it misquotes on so many levels. The media we have today, you know, just as a disaster. Now, I haven't even gotten to the fringe media, to the uh, which is particularly on the right, to the so-called alt media. Uh, and we'll do that. We'll talk about that after this break. You're listening to Yaron Brook on the Apelka, Mike Apelka Show. And we'll be back after this break. Radio Network. <laughs> Pure Opelka with Mike Opelka on the Blaze Radio Network. All right, this is Yaron Brook filling in for uh, Mike. And um, we talked about the mainstream media, and we talked about how biased they were and how not just biased but, but distortive and, and they don't read. Like in the Google memo, it, 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 you gave the, got the impression they don't even read. So they're not as professional as one would expect them to be. These are people who have journalist degrees. We'll talk about the fact that to some extent at least – Journalism degrees or, or degrees or education generally is a disadvantage, not necessarily an advantage, at least as, uh, as uh, taught in many universities today. Maybe not all, but, but in many. Generally, the problems we have today all emanate out of our universities, and we'll get, we'll get to that in a little while. But, but what about kind of the, 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 the more – the alt news? What about the alt news? Is, is, is it better? Is, is there an alternative to the uh, mainstream media, I mean, certainly, I, I like to look at a wide variety of media sources to get a sense of, of a story. I try to look at, at, at original sources, try to look for quotes when, when talking about or actually read stuff like reading the memo. But, um, but what about, what about uh, you know, Breitbart and, and, and stuff like that, or even, even worse, uh, what about Alex Jones? I mean, Alex Jones is complete fantasy. And people take him seriously. It's complete and utter garbage fantasy made up stuff, which has no relevance to the actual real world, no relevance to facts, no relevance to actually what's going on. And yet he has millions of viewers. Millions of people watch his stuff. Now, I don't know, maybe they're watching it for entertainment, but I doubt it. They watch it as if it's news. They buy into the conspiracy theories. We'll talk about conspiracy theories after the next break. They buy into the whole agenda, and they pretend they're getting news when it's just fantasy. This is true on, on the equivalent on the left. You, you got all this 
stuff out there and the internet has made this possible. Anybody can open up a news channel. Anybody can present what he does as so-called news. Now, of course, Alex Jones hosted Donald Trump on his show. Alex Jones is part of the so-called right corrective to the media. But what about Breitbart? Breitbart is, is considered respectable. This is where Bannon was, right? I mean, this is, I, I mean, this is nuts. I just opened up Breitbart just to see what we get. Well, first story, big story right at the top is an attack on Jared Kushner. Kushner, now, clearly there's a personal thing going on here between Bannon and Kushner. Also philosophical, because Bannon's this economic nationalist and Kushner might not be. So there's an attack on him related to something about Egypt that nobody really cares about, but, but everybody's reading it because they're just eating up stuff. Then there's, there's, uh, if you scroll down, you find Paul Ryan endorses Antifa. Really? I mean, I know they don't like Paul Ryan. I'm critical of Paul Ryan, but Paul Ryan has not endorsed Antifa. That just didn't happen. And if he said something that might suggest that, then he made a mistake. But Paul Ryan is not a supporter of Antifa. So, but that's a headline. This is a news agency, supposedly, giving you facts, being objective. No concept of what those terms mean. Uh, of course, they don't pretend, I guess. This is Bannon. This is Bannon pushing his political, ideological agenda. If you buy into that agenda, you're eating up Breitbart. If you don't buy into that agenda, then we may be looking skeptically at this. But news, it isn't. Reporting, it isn't. You can't read a headline or story here, right? And, and know whether you're reading anything true or not. It's, it's, some of it's fantasy. Some of it's true. Some of it's somewhat true, but, you know spun in a negative way just like the left but in many ways worse without the even the pretense of professionalism you know you know what do you do what do you do i mean where do you find actual news you go to you go to i don't know what is a daily daily wire uh, a ben shapiro's thing and, and again, it's, it's, it's headlines, it's, it's trying to, it's sound bites, it's trying to, it's seven things of this and seven things of that, as Two if minutes. you can boil down everything in life to lists. Where is actually objective reporting about what actually happens in the news on, on a regular basis? You know? and, and the closest you get to actual reporting is actually in the mainstream media. It's actually in the New York Times and the, and the Washington Post, but then you can't, then you have to have so many filters on to figure out what's real and what's not because they're presenting it so reasonably. But yet they lie or, or they distort or they don't read their sources or whatever. There's no respect today for truth. There's no respect today for fact. There's no respect today for objectivity. Why? Why? Why is it this bad? And, of course, the president was, that you know, that was his shtick. That was his shtick um, yesterday. One minute. You know, he was presenting what he said, but he left out huge amounts of what he said. He selectively quoted himself. I mean, all in the name of now I'm going to tell you the truth because the media distorts. He then went on to distort what happened on Saturday and then on Monday and then on Tuesday in his own statements. He chose the sentences to reach us and neglected the ones that weren't convenient for him. He did exactly what he accuses others of doing. He presented false you. news. All right. All right. If you want in on this conversation, call 888-900-3393. When we come back, I want to talk about why this is happening, why Americans are tolerating this, why this is across the political spectrum. And, and, and across the political, cultural life of America today. Ten. What are the sources of this? You're listening to, to Ron Brook on the Five, Alka Show. Four, we'll be back three, after this break. Two.